Hello, everybody. Uh, today's hearing officer meeting for July 18th, 2017 is called to order. Good afternoon. My name is David Williams. I'm the city of Tempe's hearing officer. Uh, the city of Tempe uh, hearing officer is authorized by Arizona Revised Statute and the city of Tempe Zoning and Development Code to, to carry out and has the duty to carry out the provisions and the intent of the city's of Tempe's general plan and zoning and development code. The hearing officer is granted the authority to conduct public hearings to review and either approve, continue, deny, or approve with conditions any of the following types of applications, use permit applications, variances, and property abatements. On today's modify agenda, we have three items to be heard, to be heard consisting of uh, one set of meeting, 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 meeting minutes, <laughs> five abatement requests, three cases for review of compliance with assigned conditions, one use permit request, and one variance request. So we have more than three items on the agenda today. Uh, agenda item number two, for your information, has been removed from the agenda. If you're here for agenda item number two, a property abatement, uh, that case has been withdrawn as the property has been brought into compliance. And also, if you are here for items 11 and 12. We're going to hear item 12 first this evening and then item 11 after item 12 for your information. As the hearing officer, I reviewed carefully the City of Tempe Community Development Department's report on each of the items that are being considered at the hearing tonight. And I use the information that's in that report during our deliberations and in making a decision on each case. I've also driven by each of the properties that are on the agenda today and looked at the conditions on the site next to the site in the immediate neighborhood. That helps me have an understanding of the context of each of these cases. To all applicants and interested citizens, when your request is called or when you wish to address the hearing officer, please step up to the podium at the front of the room and state your name and city of residence. Any person other than the applicant that wishes to speak on a case on today's agenda should complete a white speaker card, they look like this, um, and turn it in at the front of the room uh, either before you come up to speak or uh, when you come up to speak, hand it off at that moment. Um, each citizen is given three minutes uh, time to speak. Any person who is aggrieved by a decision that is made today by the hearing officer may file an appeal, and you have 14 days to file that appeal after the date of the hearing officer decision. So the deadline to appeal any decisions made today is 3 p.m. August 1st, 2017. That's August 1st, 2017 is the appeal deadline for today's decisions. Those decisions, uh, any appeals of those decisions of the hearing officer are either heard by the Board of Adjustment or the Development Review Commission, whichever body is appropriate to that type of case. If you're not sure, please check in with staff. They'd be happy to help you with that information. In the case of an abatement, if the property owner fails to file an appeal or fails to bring the property into compliance prior to that appeal date, the code violations that are being addressed at the hearings today will be abated by the City of Tempe. Uh, there's a few staff members with me today. I'd like to introduce them. Over to my right uh, is Ryan Levake. He's the Deputy Director for Planning at Tempe. Diane McGuire is here, our Administrative Assistant. Lee Jimenez is a Senior Planner. And Karen Stobel is here also. She's also a Senior Planner. Welcome, staff. Okay, we're going to get right into today's agenda. Uh, the first item for action is item number two, uh, the minutes from the July uh, 5th, 2017 hearing officer meeting. I did review those minutes. Uh, they are correct and accurate reflection of what happened on July 5th, and they are hereby approved. Item number three on today's agenda is an abatement case. It's a request to, for approval to abate public nuisance items at the Carpenter residence. This is case CE171380, located at 1646 West Fairmount Drive. The applicant's the city of Tempe. Uh, Mr. Lara Reyes, how are you today? Good. Good afternoon. My name is Andres Lara Reyes. I'm with the city of Tempe Code Compliance Division. I'm here to request a uh, abatement property at 1646 West uh, Fairmount uh, Drive in Tempe, 5282. This is uh, for violation of interior landscape uh, dead pine tree in the backyard. Uh, the property has been in violation for over uh, five months. Uh, a couple of notices were mailed out. Received a couple of messages from the uh, owner, but there has been no uh, contact since uh, 
about two months ago. Okay. Uh, the property remains in violation, request 180 day uh, abatement approval. When was the last time you were at the property? Uh, this morning. And was there any change or improvement? No, no changes. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone here in the audience today who'd like to speak on agenda item number three, an abatement case for the Carpenter property? Not seeing anyone. Uh, the requested abatement uh, by city staff uh, for an open 180 day abatement is approved as requested. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Item number four on today's agenda. Is there also an abatement case to, for approval to abate public nuisance items at the MWMAZ PLLC property, case CE171283, located at 1007 East Henry Street. The applicant is the City of Tempe. Uh, Mr. Heredia. Good afternoon. My name is Hector Heredia, Code Enforcer for Community Development, and I am here seeking for a 180 day open abatement at property 1007 East Henry Street. Uh, this property or this case has been open approximately five months where no contact has been attempted by the property owner to clear uh, the junk trash and debris littered exterior and the over height uh, it's over height as well uh, across the entire property back to front uh, this was a complaint brought to our attention anonymously and have received several other complaints uh, throughout this period, and uh, that's why I'm here to seek uh, acceptance. Okay. Uh, when was the last time you visited this property? I visited the property this morning. Uh, no uh, corrective measures have been taken. No improvements have been noted. And again, no contact has been attempted by the property owner uh, to convey a plan of action. Thank you very much. I appreciate your work today. This property was unbelievably bad when I visited it today, and the building as well seems like a potential hazard. Is there anyone in the audience who wanted to speak on agenda item number four, the abatement case for MWM? Not seeing anyone. Uh, the abatement for 180-day open abatement is absolutely approved on this property, and thank you for taking action. That's a really bad one. The next item on today's agenda is item number five. Uh, this is a request approval to abate public nuisance items at the, the Menges property, CE 174237, located at 1991 East Harvard Drive. The applicant's the city of Tempe. Mr. Schofield. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Jack Schofield, code inspector with the city of Tempe, here today requesting 180 day open abatement for the property at 1991 East Harvard Drive uh, to address deteriorated landscape, front and rear yard. Notifications have been mailed to the property owner and also posted to the property. A citation was issued to the property owner, which they failed to appear to court for. Um, the property appears to be vacant at this time. And also, since the filing of this, there has been two more complaints that came in from the public. There have. Yes, sir. Uh, last time you were there? This morning, sir. Okay. Any change? No, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone in the audience for agenda item number five, uh, the Menges property abatement case? Not seeing anyone. I did visit this property as well today and found the, uh, the, the grass and weeds and deteriorated conditions. The abatement uh, approval for an open 180 day abatement uh, is approved as requested. Thank you, sir. Okay, we are up to agenda item six, request approval to abate public nuisance items at the Jones property, uh, case CE171833, located at 1106 Manhattan Drive, the applicant's city of Tempe. Uh, Ms. Schofield. Good afternoon, Julie Schofield, code inspector for city of Tempe. Here today to ask for a 180 day open abatement for the property at 1106 East Manhattan Drive. Um, this case has been open since March and several notices have been mailed. A citation has been issued and there has been no change to the property. I would like to take care of the deteriorated landscaping, sidewalk obstruction, and a small amount of junk and debris. Thank you. When was the last time you visited the property? Was, I was there this morning. Is this the one with the crazy side yard weeds yes. growing out? That's like correct. Taller than the house. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone in the audience today on agenda item number six, an abatement case for the Jones property on East Manhattan? 
not seeing anyone here for that case. Uh, the Pardon me? <laughs> if you'd like to speak on a later case, come up and get a speaker card and fill it out and turn it in when your case is called. Uh, thank you, Ms. Schofield. Uh, just one more time for the record. Anybody here on agenda item six for the Jones property? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the, approve, the request for oh, a 180-day open abatement is approved as requested by staff. Thank you for your work on that case. We have one more abatement case today, um, and it is agenda item number seven. It's a request to abate public nuisance items at the Jaramillo property. Uh, it's case CE173-937. The property is located at 3309 South Newberry Road. The applicant is the city of Tempe, Ms. Schofield. Welcome Mr. back. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> This property has been um, abated several times. Um, the most recent complaints were back in May, uh, followed up with a couple of notices to have the owner clean up the property, and it is still in violation, uh, asking for 180-day open abatement for the landscaping in the front yard. Thank you. And did you visit this property today? Yes, sir. And conditions remain conditions as... Conditions are still the same, yeah. if not worse. That's what I observed as well. Thank you very much for your work today. Anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on agenda item number seven, a property abatement for the Jaramillo property? Not seeing anyone. The city's request for a 180-day open abatement is approved. Thank you very much, staff. I appreciate your work on those cases. Okay, we're going to go to our first um, compliance case. And these next three cases deal with businesses complying with conditions of their use permit. Uh, when a business gets a use permit, there's usually conditions attached on how they have to operate their business uh, to be good neighbors and good members of the community. So some businesses need to return to have those conditions checked to make sure they are, in fact, complying. And the next three cases will talk about those type of issues. Uh, so our first one is agenda item number eight. It is a request to review for compliance with the assigned conditions of approval for use permit to allow entertainment, uh, indoor live music for CASA, that's C-A-S-A, -A, located at 5 East, East 6th Street uh, and 603 South Mill Avenue. The applicant is Shul Mantle and Affiliates. And... These are for agenda item 11. Thank you, staff. And, okay, uh, Ms. Stovall, please. Good Welcome. Evening. Good evening. My name Kept is... Kept in suspense, huh? Yes. My name is Karen Stovall, senior planner. Um, CASA is an existing business located at the southeast corner of 6th Street and Mill Avenue. The business actually occupies three different spaces, which are outlined in this aerial photo. Um, these were two previously existing business areas and this um, uh, address off of Mill Avenue is the one in question. Um, in May 2016, the hearing officer approved a use permit to allow indoor live music at 603 South Mill Avenue. And the area of that use permit is indicated in yellow on the floor plan. Um, the use permit approval included a stipulation to return to the hearing officer for a six-month review of compliance with the conditions of approval. During the six months, CASA um, has, has been providing live music in this suite. Planning staff has not received any public input. The police department did receive one complaint in February 2017 um, regarding loud bass. Police work with the business to resolve the issue, and no valid complaints have been documented since. Um, the police representative who I contacted, who handles downtown community issues, has stated that he believes CASA is in compliance with its um, approval and that the business is quick to resolve any issues. Uh, based on this information, we believe the applicant is in compliance with the conditions of approval, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. So uh, there are a number of conditions of approval, about 10. Uh, looking through them, really only had issue with the one, and as I understand it from the record and the police information and the neighbor input, they communicated about the issues, changed the operation parameters or whatever, and we're happy neighbors now. Correct. Okay. 
that's what I needed to know. Thank you very much. I may need to ask you back later for a question, but thank you. Is the applicant here or their representative? I am. Charles Human on behalf of the Welcome. Of the Thanks for being here today. It's good to be here as well. I'm happy to answer any questions, but I think your presentation was thorough. It looks like, yeah, the things have gone the right direction. The process works. Um, so thank your um, client for uh, working with the community to get that in. I don't have any here, additional questions. He can hear questions. you as well, so that's wonderful as well. He's in the Great. back. Great. Excellent. Um, anything else you wanted to add at this point? It okay. seems I don't, I don't have any white cards on this, so um, we look like we're in good shape, and thanks for being here again. Thank you and very much. Good luck with the business. Anybody in the audience who'd like to speak on item number eight, it's a use permit for CASA for live music on Mill Avenue. Okay. I'm not seeing anybody. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. I'm going to make a motion here or a finding for the record, but I uh, appreciate your time being here. As I mentioned earlier, uh, certain businesses are required to come back for a review of conditions to assure compliance. As I mentioned, there are 10 conditions of uh, approval on this use permit. Each and every one of those was checked by staff, um, including the hours of operation, the way that business is operated, the live music's operated, and they were found to be in compliance. Uh, they rectified the one problem they have. Uh, so um, item number eight, the CASA uh, compliance review, it's case PL160137, has been found to be in compliance with its conditions. Okay, the next item is number nine, also a compliance review with the club called the school. This is PL160230, located at 411 South Mill. It's upstairs in 201. Uh, the applicant is Kevin Guinan. I hope I pronounced that okay. Uh, Mr. Jimenez. Good evening. Lee Jimenez, Senior Planner with the Community Development Department. Um, at the hearing held on July 19, 2016, the hearing officer heard and approved a use permit to add a teen nightclub component to School of Rock, uh, which is an existing nightclub located at 411 South Mill and Suite 201 in the CC City Center District and within the TOD Transportation Overlay District. Approval for the use permit condition that the applicant return to the hearing officer for a six-month review of compliance. Um, outside of typical phone calls, um, calls for service, excuse me, for this type of establishment, uh, Police Department's Crime Prevention Unit has no major concerns with the use. Um, no records of commercial complaints or violations have been reported to or by the Code Compliance Division since the use permit was approved. And to date, no public input has been received in regards to this review of compliance. Uh, based on the information provided on the applicant and the uh, police input received, staff believes that this operation is in compliance with all the conditions of approval and supports the continuation of the use permit. That's good news all around. That explains all the bubble gum on, this, on the queuing outside area where they stand in line. It's a teen club. I, I've never seen so much bubble gum on anybody's patio or stairs in my life. That explains it. Thank you, Mr. Jimenez. Is the applicant here today? There's, there's quite a few other places that have uh, gum. <laughs> I, I, I feel your pain. <laughs> uh, Narendra Raju, general manager. Welcome for being here. Is there any information you'd like to present or any questions you have? Uh, no here to answer any questions. Okay. Well, you're welcome to have a seat. Thanks for taking Is that better? Anyone in the audience you'd like to speak on agenda item 9, School of Rock? Come on up. Matt Smith um, is actually a joke, but it didn't work out very well because this turned out to be official. But if I, if you could give me a moment here, is uh, Jack Black have any affiliation with this? Zero. Oh, that's too bad. Okay. <laughs> End of comment. Thank you very much. Thank Let you. the record show I'm in full support of school. Okay, there's a white speaker card there. You just earned the right to fill one out. All Thank right, you very, very much. Good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen the movie, you know why Jack Black. Is. Right. This is a good thing for the community. Yeah. But I still, there's an actual school of rock. Yeah. As well. Yeah. yeah. We're going to return to official city business now, <laughs> okay. if you don't mind. 
<laughs> we're going to, uh, so item number nine, there was no one else to speak on that. Uh, staff found, in this case, had uh, 11 conditions of approval um, dealing with the, the, the nature of the use there. Uh, they were all found, all the applicable ones were found to be in compliance. And as such, uh, the compliance review for School of Rock, PL160230, um, is, is uh, found to be in the affirmative. They are in compliance with their conditions. Um, and well done. I'm sure it's not easy to handle. Okay, moving right along. Agenda item number 10, request review for compliance with the assigned conditions of approval for approved use permits for what used to be Wasted Grain, which is now the Funky Monk, located at 526 South Mill Avenue, Suite 101. Mr. Jimenez. Good evening, once again, Lee Jimenez, Senior Planner with the Community Development Department. At the hearing held January 17th, 2017, the hearing officer heard and approved two use permit requests to allow a series bar uh, um, excuse me, a Series 6 bar and live entertainment with outdoor speakers for Funky Monk, formerly named Wasted Grain, uh, located on the northwest corner of 6th Street and Mill Avenue in the CC City Center District and within the, the TOD Transportation Overlay District. Approval of the use permits condition that the applicant return to the hearing officer for a six-month review of compliance. Outside of typical calls for service for this type of establishment, uh, Police Department's Crime Prevention Unit has no major concerns uh, with the establishment. Although no record of, records of commercial complaints or correction notices have been reported to the Code Compliance Division, the patio addition shown on the site and floor plan has not passed its final building permit inspection uh, because of the unauthorized video screens. Um, the original use permits and development plan review scope of work did not include installation of those video screens, but nonetheless, the screens require separate approval uh, through the development plan review process and have no bearing on the compliance review. Staff is working with the applicant to rectify the complaint um, on the video uh, screen installations, or the non, excuse me, on the non-compliant video screen installations. Uh, to date, no public input has been received in regards to the compliance review, and based on the information provided by the applicant um, and public and police input received, staff believes that this operation is in compliance with all conditions of approval and supports the continuation of the use permits. Okay. Uh, so other than the... Uh additional video screens, there was no other compliance issues. That's correct. Um, and is, in staff's opinion or any recommendation, any reason to hold up the compliance review because of the video screens or okay to proceed with compliance review, you feel we're adequately covered? Is I don't that... see it has any impact on their use okay. permits. And Understood. Since it requires a separate review process, we can rectify that separately. And if they fail to do that, what will happen? Uh, it, it's a, right now, it comes down to their final inspection for the building permit for the patio. Oh, so they won't so, pass inspection. Yeah, they would have to rectify the issue prior to the building permit expiring. But there's sufficient incentive. Okay, That's that was right. my question. Thank you, sir. Is the applicant here today, our representative for Funky Monk? Come on up. Welcome. Thank you for taking the time to come down today. Thank you. Need your name for the record, and if you have any information you want to present or questions, you're welcome to do My so. My name is Michael Kelly. I'm the architect representing the Funky Monk, and um, I agree with what Lee had presented. We are looking at the video screens on, as a separate issue, right? And uh, we'll have a s submittal for that probably within the next week. Great. Okay. Thanks again for being here. Appreciate okay. it. Anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on agenda item number 10, uh, use permit review of approved conditions for, the, for Funky Monk on Mill Avenue? Okay, I also visited this site as well as the previous two sites uh, to inspect and check on these conditions. Look good to go. We've noted the video screen issue and that's sufficiently addressed. Uh, the um, the uh, Funky Monk is found to be within its conditions of approval or to be complying with those conditions of approval. And thank you again for taking the time to be here and thank you, staff. Okay, it is baseball season and this is your curveball, everybody. Instead of agenda item 11, we're gonna hear agenda item 12 and then we'll get to 11 um, promptly. 
So let's jump to agenda item number 12. This is a request approval of a variance to allow a block wall fence greater than four feet in height and the required front yard setback for the Pulliam residence PL170167 is the case number and it's located at uh, 1315 South Mill Avenue. Mr. Jimenez. Good evening, Lee Jimenez once again, Senior Planner with the Community Development Department. Uh, the Pulliam residence is located on the north 71 feet of lot 12 of the University Park Division subdivision uh, located uh, north of East 14th Street and east of South uh, Mill Avenue in the R16 single family residential district. The applicant Cody Risden of Unique Landscape and Pools is requesting a variance to rectify an as built six foot tall block wall fence within the required front yard. The non-permitted fence was installed by a previous owner sometime between January 28th and December 17th in the year 2000. The current owner is proposing a new pool on the northwest portion of the, of the lot, uh, which encroaches into the required front and north side yards. There's little room for a pool installation in the backyard area due to the size of the lot, the placement of the home, and overhead electrical lines along the east property line. The owner would like to continue to use the existing fence for privacy, noise mitigation, and safety. Should the variance be granted, it would also provide as a required pool barrier. A neighborhood meeting was held on Monday, July 3rd, 2017 at 5 p.m., where five members of the neighborhood attended. Mr. Risden facilitated the meeting and provided a tour of the asphalt wall and the location of the proposed pool. He answered questions concerning the details of the pool, such as the placement and size. Staff was on hand to answer questions about the variance application and the hearing process. Uh, to date, one public inquiry was received by phone. However, after learning that the as built wall has existed for nearly 17 years, he indicated that he has no concern uh, with the wall as it exists today. <clears throat> as indicated in the staff report, staff believes that this application meets the approval criteria for the variance and supports the request subject to the condition in the staff report. Thank you very much, Mr. Jimenez. Um, and as of uh, uh, earlier discussion, there's no protest has been received, either um, written or from phone nothing call. Nothing right other than that phone call and nothing in, in writing. Okay, I do correct. understand, or I'm aware that there are some audience members here to speak on behalf of this case. Yes. Thank you very much. Is the applicant here today or their representative? Welcome. Hi. My name is Cody Risden. All right, you're the, uh, the landscape pool guy. Mm -hmm. Do you have any additional information you wanted to present today? I do not. Okay, do you know David Spongler or uh, Stephen Crane? Um, I believe they were at our neighborhood meeting. Were they? Okay. So you may, okay. So you may have uh, spoken with them before? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything anything you wanted to add? I may ask you back for questions and later. Nothing to add. Thank you for being here, Cody. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so agenda item 12, public hearing. Uh, anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this item? I've got two speaker cards, uh, Stephen, Stephen Crane. Welcome. Thank you for being here. My name is Stephen Crane. I live uh, in the area there, within the historic area. It's designated on the National Register of Historic Homes. Um, speaking to this issue, I believe that uh, the neighborhood is in danger of losing its historic uh, resident designation because of lack of compliance with contributing homes, homes that contribute in the neighborhood to the historic register. Uh, once we drop below that level, then we lose that, and everybody in the area loses a historic significance. Also, the tax advantage is associated with that. So I'm not in favor of people going outside the historic designation. Of what, In other words, I would rather all the homes be a, a contributor instead of a minus, be a plus 
instead of a minus. And I think that um, this unfortunate item was done probably about the time that we gained historic significance, mm -hmm. right about that time. Yeah, probably. Uh, I don't believe that this house currently is a contributor. It could be a contributor if it didn't have the wall. Right. So I would, you know, that's, I'm here speaking to the neighborhood because I've lived there for 28 years. And uh, I, would, I would like to see the area continue to be historic. It's interesting. It doesn't actually front on a public street, right? The house itself. The it does. Previous lot split. It, it fronts it, on mill. But, it yeah. fronts on mill. Right. Okay. But it is. It is. And also, the other issue I have with it is, uh, from a safety standpoint, is the alley. When you go down the alley and want to turn out, mm -hmm. you can't see oncoming traffic. Yeah. That's I noticed other, that today. That's that's the other safety thing that I think is of some concern for a variance to allow it to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crane. I have another speaker card from, I hope I pronounce this right, David Spongler. Cool. Please help me out when you get up here. Maybe it's an A, huh, Spangler? Welcome. Well, Thank you for coming. It's Spangler. It is Spangler. Thank you. Okay. I'm one of the people that got a letter from uh, Mr. Risden, I believe, or from the city. And in this letter, it said it was sent to all property owners within 600 feet. I also received this one, but it doesn't say it was sent to all the property owners within the 600 feet. So one of my questions is, was it sent to all the people within the 600 feet as this letter was? That's one question. Okay. My second question, and I have no objections to the fence, first of all. So I don't have a problem with the variance request. So my, question, my second question is basically with the city on the 600 foot uh, radius notification area, yeah. Can Mr. Jimenez or Mr. Risden show us on a slide how far that 600 feet encompasses? Maybe I can how certainly far, explain it. Yeah. How far west does it go past the tracks west? How far south does it go to the Wells Fargo building? How far east? the Tempe High School, the hospital. So I'm just curious. To you kind of envision it's about a ninth of a mile, less well, than a tenth me, of a mile, when I was, or eleventh of a mile. When me. I was in high school, 600 feet, two football fields, that's a long way. Uh -huh. So those are my two questions. Okay. Thank you for coming today. It, it has and nothing to do with the variance. We'll question. give staff a chance at, that, uh, at those questions. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You're very welcome, and thank you for helping me with your name. I hope they can answer it Well, I, we're going to see if we can answer it right now. We do have a, uh, we can bro throw up that zoning map too, maybe, and 600 feet's not as far as you think. Um, but it's probably, you know, if you're within four or five lots away, that's about, going to be about 600 feet. Okay, so actually, when I create this Mr. Uh, Jimenez. map, excuse me, I'm sorry, I should yeah. have uh, <laughs> asked for you to call Welcome me back. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the vicinity map that I provide for the postcard and on the staff report, I typically provide within a, six foot, a 600 foot radius. So the eastern boundary would be the street uh, to the west, or I'm sorry, to the east of let me interrupt and, uh, a second. Let me interrupt a second too. So the first question was, what is the notice area? Is oh, it 600 sorry. feet for all for sure. This item. Public notification requirements um, for uh, variances is that we contact or send postcards to six to property owners within 600 feet of the property line, property line to property line, as well as homeowner and neighborhood associations right. within a quarter mile of the site. And this is the vice and or presidents of the of each association. 
In addition to that, we also uh, advertise the agenda in the Arizona Republic, um, at least uh, 15 calendar days prior to the hearing. And we also post a sign on the site um, that lists, that shows the variance request and when the hearing is held. And we do the same, the same rules apply to the neighborhood meeting as well. So uh, um, the city is in charge of the hearing notice and the applicant is in charge of the neighborhood meeting notice notices. That explains why they're different looking, uh, but it's a 600 foot area. And uh, you guys, I got to tell you, the city does an excellent job doing those extra notifications to other organizations and stakeholders. When you measure the distance, is it like zoning that you might skip over right away or streets and measuring that distance or just a straight 600 from the property? It's property line to property line. Okay. We we create a buffer on the uh, Maricopa County Assessor's website, right? And it basically takes those parcels okay. that touch that uh, buffer area. So, does this map show an area bigger than six hundred? That, that's a close indicator of what the six hundred foot radius you looks like. Why do throw that up on the screen, and we can deal? We kind of be done with this issue, I think. So it would be maybe the, the, yeah, the subject. Could you point out the subject property right here? Yeah. Okay. And the radius. You can draw probably there. go up to to the northern boundary would be the um, maybe the intersection of where Apache curves into Mill up here. Right. Um, south of mm -hmm. East Parkway Boulevard, which so, would be down here. Right. So you're looking at a circle. Does that help you understand what? The, the area that got notified, Mr. Spanky? Oh, great. Not that far, right. Those are, subs are a little bit further down. Mr. Jimenez, thank you for the extra information. Um, uh, I appreciate that. I'm not sure. What you can do is... Um, Check with staff when the meeting's over or give them a call tomorrow and they can provide additional information. They have very specific procedures they have to follow to comply with City of Tempe ordinance. So it's not a, a judgment or it's not a soft boundary. It's, it's, very, it's very well delineated in code. You're welcome. All right, agenda item number 12 is a request for a variance for a block wall that's already there. Um, it is a historic neighborhood. It is a property that's been split, reduced, and it's essentially hidden. Uh, while it does front on Mill, it doesn't front on a local neighborhood street. And I do appreciate the comments about the historic character. And that is a fabulous neighborhood. I got to tell you, I've done some other cases in there and seen some other housing additions. And historic character, of course, is important um, to the city. Uh, in this case, because of the nature of that property and the frontage on Mill, um, and I really, it's Sound mitigation is important for living quality in a house that close. I know they bought it with that condition. That's really what they bought into. Um, but based on those facts um, and my visit to the property and inspection of the conditions there, um, I think this variance is acceptable. There are some uh, criteria uh, from the code I want to review. Uh, that there are special circumstances applicable to the property, including a size, shape, topography, location. Um, and the special circumstances here is a lot size. It's one of the smallest in the neighborhood, and it's immediately adjacent to Mill Road, so it's really kind of hemmed in, and there's some overhead utility, as staff pointed out. Uh, the second criteria, the ap strict application of the code deprives the property owner privileges enjoyed by other property in the same classification. Um, many of the interior lot properties have significantly larger area to enjoy a uh, fair percentage of their yard area in a safe and quiet manner. And we think this variance helps this property get on equal grounds with the neighborhood, in my opinion. The adjustment authorized shall not constitute a grant of special privilege. Again, I think this is just getting them back to equal footing with their neighbors. And number four, a variance may not be granted if the special circumstances applicable to the property are self-imposed by the property owner. Uh, we wish we'd known about this wall when it got built, uh, but it, we know that that wall preceded this owner. They did not create the circumstance, um, and we have information to affirm that. 
There is one condition of approval. Um, I assume the applicant's familiar with that. And uh, subject to that condition, this request for variance is approved. And thank you very much, uh, neighbors, for coming in today. And thank you for the applicant for being here. On that note, we are going to move to our one use permit case today, which is item number 11. This is a request for approval of a use permit to allow a tobacco retailer uh, called Gravitate Smoke Shop. It's case PL170196, located at 1761 East Warner Road, Suite 19. If you want to speak on this case and you've not turned in a white speaker card, please do so now if you would and hand them off to staff. Uh, Mr. Jimenez. Good evening. Once again, Lee Jimenez, Senior Planner with the Community Development Department. Uh, Gravitate Smoke Shop is proposing to operate a smoke shop in Suite 19 of Cobblestone Village Center, uh, which is located on the southwest corner of East Warner Road and South McClintock Drive in the PCC1 Plan Commercial Center and Neighborhood District. The shop plans to sell tobacco items such as cigarettes, cigars, hookah pro products, electronic cigarettes, and other smoke-related items. Hours of operation will be from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. The store manager and two employees will be on hand at all times. In addition to requiring a use permit to allow a tobacco retailer in the zoning district, the use is also subject to use separation requirements in which tobacco retailers shall not be located within a quarter mile or 1,320 feet measured by a straight line in any direction from lot line to lot line of any charter, uh, school, private school, or public school, which provides elementary or secondary education. Staff confirms that the application complies with the use separation requirements. Corona del Sol High School and Kyrene Middle School are both located more than a half mile from the subject site. Furthermore, Kyrene del Cielo Elementary School is, uh, in the city of Chandler is approximately 2,125 feet away. Since the staff report was drafted, staff has received five emails and one phone call in opposition to the use permit request. The emails and phone call cited concern for compatibility of proposed, uh, the, the proposed use within the shopping center and the neighborhood, conflict with the city's goals, objectives, policies, and adopted plans, and potential of downgrading nearby property values. One of the emails provided, um, provided the results of an online petition in opposition to the use permit application, noting that 397 out of 398 responders do not want the smoke shop in the shopping center. The, respondent, the respondents uh, make up 38 neighborhoods located within the 85284 zip code, including business owners in the same shopping center and across the street. Uh, however, as indicated originally on the staff report, staff believe that this application met the approval criteria and supported the, the use permit um, subject to the conditions provided in the staff report. Thank you very much, Mr. Jimenez. I appreciate your report. Let's get to the applicant on this. Is the uh, applicant or the representative here today? Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Nasser Alatrash, and I'm the applicant for Gravitate Smoke Shop LLC. Um, seems like we're pretty popular today, so I'm here to answer. You are questions. very popular, young man. I'm here to answer any questions. <laughs> <laughs> All your friends are here. Everybody. Do uh, you have any information you want to present? Um, I may have some I, questions for you later. I do have a question for you now. Do you operate any other smoke shops in the city of Tempe? I, in Tempe, I used, I sold one about three years ago. It was on Southern and Mill. But I do have three other ones. I have two in Scottsdale, Old Town Scottsdale, and I have one on 99th Avenue in Lake Pleasant, Peoria. Okay. I've been in so business you, for four you have experience in the business, but you don't have any of them in the city of Tempe no, as of today. Me. As of today, no. Okay. Is there anything you want to add, or anything else? Um, I mean, he, we pretty much meet, you know, the criteria. I did my homework, I did my research. Um, I feel like a lot of people have this, like, negative stigma about this kind of business. So mm -hmm. that's why, and I understand some of these people and why they don't want it, but. We have, I mean, we have three so far. We have, we had four, we have three, and we're looking to open our fourth. We do have, we have a corporate office. I mean, this is not a small mom and pop operation. We, we have guidelines, we have rules. Like you said, we have a manager on site always. We have two employees, and then, a lot of the 
concerns and the comments I was getting about kids, you can't be, you have to be 18 into our store. And then, come into the store? Yeah, to come into the store, to pur you have to be 18, not to purchase, but to walk into the store, you have to be 18. You're going to get your ID checked if you're not. We've never, I've been four and a half years in business, never had an issue. So it's not, I don't think it's going to be, I mean, that's not. And then also I've, I've seen a lot about devaluating the property. I don't know in what way that's even possible. So I don't, how do you go off of us? It's just a small retail store. I think we're going to hear about that. I've had a, I've had a, <laughs> I've had a. At least issues. ideas about that. Yeah, anyway. issues with the, actually getting into the center was an issue. And then uh, my landlord, Roy, actually lives in Canada. And he shut down the idea the first time he heard it. Then he came down here. And he actually came and, and walked through some of my stores. And he said, um, we have glass now it's contemporary you know it's like it's a shape of it's art now we go to these shows there's pieces for twenty five thousand dollars there's pieces for thirty thousand dollars i have in my scottsdale store my most expensive piece is ten thousand dollars these are like collectible pieces that you know so that's why i feel like a lot of people have this just like the industry has evolved you know medical marijuana is legal now we don't sell medical we don't sell marijuana we won't we're not in that business so but it's just it's, it's evolved and there's it's just so much going on that, but like I said, a lot of people just have that mindset of it's just going to attract like bad people and this and that. I mean, yeah. I don't know, but we're here. We'll, we'll answer questions and you know, we'll see how it goes. I understand that there are some stereotypes and things that go with these type of businesses. So well, let's hear from the folks who came and Absolutely. See, what we, see what we see. Um, so we're going to get started with the public input. Just a reminder. Uh, you're limited to three minutes. If you do everyone a favor, uh, if you support previous comments, just state you support those comments. We don't need to repeat all those things over and over and over. I'm going to be keeping a tally and noting what your concerns are. They are very important to me. Um, so we've got a big stack of cards here. I think we've got 20 speakers. Thank you all for being here. And our first speaker is Jacob Spencer. Um, Welcome. Uh, Thanks for being here. Thank you. My uh, name is Jacob Spencer. I'm a resident of Altamira, which is on the uh, the neighborhood that is on the southeast corner of Warner McClintock. Uh, the the same this, uh, uh, Warner McClintock being the street where the smoke shop is proposed. Uh, so Altamira in the last decade uh, has had a large influx of young families. Uh, almost everyone has moved in over that time period. Uh, has had elementary school children. Um, we have a dearth of, cross, of safe crossings to get to the schools uh, and uh, Cielo School, uh, which is right across uh, McClintock from us. So our kids, when we walk our bike to school, would go uh, right by that smoke shop. So given it's, it's, uh, it, it's, that neighborhood's very safe, very family friendly, excellent schools, it's drawing mostly families with young, with young children and feel that this is not supporting the, the character of the neighborhood, rather not have you know, something potentially later open late like some of their other locations, selling things like, like, like bongs and other paraphernalia, uh, being right where our kids walk to school. So I would request that the city deny the use permit. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Jimenez, can you put the exhibit, the zoning exhibit up on the screen? so? When people come up, they could kind of point to where, if they're that close. Thank you very much, Mr. Spencer. So if you want to, you don't have to. You can kind of help me out by show if you're on this map on the screen, how close you are. Um, the, the site is where that arrow is pointing to, uh, fronting on uh, McClintock. Okay, our next speaker is Don, Don Stantis. Welcome. Thank Hello. you for coming. Thank you. I'm Don Stantis. I live um, really close to here, right here. Okay. Um, I'm not opposed to smoke shops, but I'm opposed to the location of this smoke shop. I feel like we have a very tight knit family community, just as Jacob just said. Um, I don't like the the crowd that it draws. I don't like. I was just on vacation in Washington for the last month where I own a summer home, 
and marijuana is legal there and the crowds, you, it, it's just not what I'm looking for in my neighborhood. I'm not looking for people to go into a smoke shop um, buying whatever accessories they need for however much money they want to spend and then driving around our community when our kids, you know, when we're, we have young families out riding bikes and stuff like that. So my, my biggest opposition is the, the type of people that are in the, the traffic that's going to be going in and out of there. Thank you for coming. Just, today. just not, not on that corner. I think it's a bad corner. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I've got Matt Smith, and so you can queue up. Next is be after Matt will be Kathy Carney. Mr. Williams, welcome. Thanks for coming. So, um, let me first point out: I live back this way. Okay. I'm just beneath the street, so Great. I'm in Los Tesoros neighborhood. Um, I'm the neighborhood chairman, and uh, I am a big advocate for cycling and for fitness in South Tempe. Um, I run the website SouthTempe.org, which is specifically to encourage cycling along Warner Road. Um, so I'm a big proponent of community and of fitness in a family-friendly neighborhood. I'm very proud of 85284. I rock the t-shirts, and it's a beautiful community. And um, just as any of my neighbors, they're all ASU University professionals, you know, uh, just a great group of people. So I'm a big advocate. So when I saw this, and I'm going to be very straightforward, and if I could just speak directly, is... No, no, so you need to address yeah, your comments I just, to the hearing uh, officer. I, I make Thank you. no apology about it. I do not like smoke shops um, for a lot of reasons. Uh, I'm sure people will share those reasons tonight, so I'm not going to give you my personal reasons. But I do want to present the results. I made an online petition at 10 a.m. yesterday, and within 30 hours, we had over 400 responses. Um, as of today, so when this document was printed, um, we had 396. So if we take a look here, we're at 396 responses right there. Of those 396, 395 were against the vape shop, the smoke shop and one was for it. Since then, uh, this was drafted at 12 p.m. today, and as of this time of me coming forward, we're now up to 419. No joke, we've almost approached 420 is the magic number of people. But keep in mind, 419 or four, but we have one that's against. I mean, against one's four. I want to go through this very quickly here. These, there's some key, key things I want you to see. So if we're able to zoom on this, that would be fantastic. First of all, there was one petitioner who was for it. Like I said, 395, again, we're up to 318 who were against it. The petitioners were from 38 neighborhoods, 38. Um, both businesses and households responded. I want to start with the businesses. Matt, there you were, got about a minute left. So okay, you know. we have three businesses. One is the entire facility below it, the Quiet Center. And I don't know if Mr. Finkel's attorney is here, um, but the Quiet Center just to the south said no. They signed the petition. That's the one right next door to the south? Uh, it's just south. It's a freestanding facility. Yeah, right. It has multiple units. I visited them too, yeah. Nail okay. Salon just north says no, and the uh, um, another business just north of there as well. They have their suite number. Um, so all three of the neighbors, so make no mistake, three of the neighbors of this proposed location have said no for businesses. These are the homes and we don't even have room for this, but it's 38 neighborhoods who've responded to this. Uh, so represented from 38 neighborhoods. This was the petition that I sent out. We had 36 hours. Right. This is our official results. These two columns are yes, and these two columns uh, combine for, uh, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, I inverted it, but yes and no. But you see the numbers. The point I want to make here. I need you to wrap up your comments. Okay. okay the point I'm trying to make here is that, it's not a question. There's many reasons why, but I think the overwhelming response from the neighborhood has said no. Um, and that would really make me question whether or not this is the best fit for their entrepreneurship. There's a lot of open intersections, but this is not an intersection that's going to embrace this. I understand. Very excellent re response you received online. Thank you for your work on this, to reach out to the community and the neighborhoods. It's much appreciated. The more input, the better. I value folks that showed up today more, to be honest, but to hear this additional input is helpful. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, staff, so on the light over here, when does the yellow go off? Because we're now at almost four six minutes. Six seconds left, so we just added the, the minute indicator to, to wrap up. Okay, so the yellow will go on when you have one minute left? 
Okay. Cool. That's a help. Thank you again, Mr. Smith. Okay, Kathy, welcome. And then after Kathy is Beeson. Beeson, there's probably just one Beeson, right? All right, great. Hi, I'm Kathy Carney. I live in Chandler. I actually live off of the map. I'm down um, on Ray. I um, About a mile away. What? About a mile away or so. About a mile away. Yeah. Um, I do frequent that um, plaza. I, I go to Starbucks quite regularly. Um, I don't have anything against smoke shops. I just don't think our neighborhood is the right place for that. One of the um, concerns I have, I know that when a new business goes in, I'm sure modifications are made to that building, but um, that particular uh, suite was a dry cleaners in its previous life and um, owned by a friend of mine, of course. Um, <laughs> and it had a drive-up window. So it has a great big, huge sliding glass door. People would just drive up and they wouldn't have to park and go get their laundry. And, and it was very convenient, but I just don't think that's right for a smoke shop. Um, you know, they could always wall it in, but um, I wish the applicant much luck finding a place, but I, I just don't think Warner and McClintock is the place for it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate them. And staff, to clarify, is there a drive-through element of this application? Is that a component of this op business Hearing operation? Hearing Officer Williams, uh, that is not included in the scope of work so for so, this So the public knows that there, if, if this is approved, it would not have a drive-through window or facility whatsoever. Beeson, I apologize. Uh, your last name? Frederick. Frederick. Frederick Beeson. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Hearing Officer. I am Frederick Beeson. I want to just simply register my concurrence in what has been said so far. A good friend of mine is here uh, to speak to this point, and he's much more uh, uh, prepared to do so. So if it's permissible uh, as a matter of pre uh, process, I'd like to reserve my ability to comment uh, until the end. This is your time, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. we got a lot of folks here to okay. speak, well, so I need your comments now. I'm sure that it'll I'm be sorry. Applied, but I did want to register my uh, concern, and it, uh, it's in line with what's been said so far. Thank you for Thank taking you. the time to be here. And again, mainly concerned the appropriateness of this use at this location, as I see. Okay, uh, next two speakers, uh, Pat Collins, and then following Pat is Thomas Collins. Speaker, my name is Patricia Collins, and Welcome. I am a, a high school principal. And I would like to voice my concern with student traffic as Corona del Sol, their uh, cross-country team runs right past that over and over and over throughout the year. I am also in a neighborhood right behind that abuts this area, and I do believe that it is not in uh, the best interest of our neighborhood to have this type of establishment in that area. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for being here. Okay, Thomas, and then after Thomas is Joe Markeef, I think. Markeef, thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, Hearing Officer Williams, I have Welcome. documents I'd like to make part of the record, if at all possible, may I approach? Absolutely. Thank you, and gets it into staff. Um, Mr. Hearing Officer, I'll be as brief as possible given the time constraints. I have three principal things I want to say, and Mr. Alatrash has raised most of those issues, and I want to address them directly. First, and the documents you have in front of you demonstrate there have been recent DEA busts of East Valley smoke shops. On April 20th of this year, two people were arrested for five smoke shop robberies in the Northwest Valley. Teens are using e-cigarettes for consuming marijuana, according to a 2015 USA Today story, and a related 2014 NPR story details a similar phenomenon that is in the record before you. I should say now, I would ask that you deny this, or at least continue it until you have time to review the materials that I've provided, because this go directly to what has been said today. 
The National Institute for Drug Abuse found that hookahs are more harmful than cigarettes, and NBC News reported that according to CDC, e-cigarettes are marketed towards kids. Mr. Ellis has conceded that he operates another Gravitate outlet in Scottsdale. Uh, that is correct, and the records of the uh, Arizona Corporation Commission, which are provided for you, appear to support that. That particular location has an Instagram page. That Instagram page is at Instagram.com, Gravitate Smoke Shop. And I just want to read you a few items, because the application, the materials that staff has prepared say this is about selling cigarettes and hookahs and e-cigarettes. And yet, here, on December 31st, December 21st, 2016, according to the Instagram, you can buy a pipe that twists in your herb. And if you're familiar with hashtags, which are ways to draw people into your social media to bring you to the store, hashtag dabs. What does that mean? Well, the materials you'll see show that dabbing is a marijuana extract that is powerful. And there are materials from the National Drug Policy Center on that. Hashtag ganja and hashtag AZ Prop 203. Mr. Alatrash mentioned the AMA, the Arizona uh, Medical Marijuana Act, but in the context of ganja and dabbing, medical marijuana is a different thing altogether. You'll see that repeatedly throughout the, the things that you'll see in, in, that I provided, the hashtags. Uh, finally, leading up to on 420, <laughs> a sale announced on April 18th, a 420 sale, hashtag Prop 200, or 203, hashtag 420, hashtag 420 sale. I think it is entirely clear what Gravitate Smoke Shop is, and it isn't the name itself. It is Gravitate Smoke Shop. I don't think there is any way that you can square Gravitate Smoke Shop with what the description of selling tobacco products is that is in the staff recommendation. And for that reason, at the very least, a continuance is warranted, if not an outright denial. And unless you have any questions? That completes my statement. Thank you very much for the materials. I appreciate that. Okay. Most popular speaker so far. Mm -hmm. uh, I would ask you to hold your applause till the end. Uh, but thank you very much for your comments. I take them very seriously. And it's a serious case today. So I don't mean to make light of that. Um, we have Joe. I'm sorry. Hi. Welcome. My name and is Joe Marquette. I'm a resident of Tempe, and I've lived in zip code 85284 for eight years. My husband has lived there for over in that zip code for over 20 years. Um, I have been in the field of education for over 25 years. My husband has coached youth soccer for about the same number, 25 years. Um, both my husband and I are vehemently against this smoke shop. Uh, we have had, we know, we have personal stories of youth who have gone down the wrong path due to drugs. Uh, my husband has right now a former player on death row. Um, he's currently serving and, for the murder of his own child, an infant, uh, while he was high. In most cases, the gateway for, um, for marijuana, or for, for all kinds of drugs, the gateway drug is marijuana. Um, the smoke shop in question makes no secret, um, as the previous uh, speaker has indicated, that their advocacy of getting high is high. Um, and um, that they make no um, bones about par uh, selling paraphernalia associated with getting stoned. I am highly concerned um, not only about how this establishment will affect our financial side of our neighborhood, but more importantly, I'm highly concerned as an educator um, about the individual lives of our youth and um, our young adults and their families who have to um, deal with the aftermath and the trauma and pain associated with all kinds of things that come from um, addiction. That kind of shop is out of place at this location and I feel to see how a smoke shop will positively contribute to the community that I call home. And I ask, with respect, that you please do not approve this permit. Thank you very much for taking the time to come today. I appreciate your comments. Next, I've got Ron, Ron Towell. And after Ron, I've got Frank, Frank, Camp Brew, Camp Boo. Ron, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ron Toll. I'm a resident of Tempe. In fact, I live in the uh, same neighborhood with Matt and those Tesoros. We've been there 26 years now. So I think everybody's pretty much summed up 
what there is to say about the you know subject. I mean, you know, I've never been in a smoke shop, so it's hard for me to say I don't like them. But looking at the pictures I saw online, looks like they sell pipes to smoke crack, to smoke marijuana, to maybe even. No, you do not. Okay. Oh, really, Mr. Mr. Tallon. Yes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just. I heard noise behind me, so it's just. I understand. I understand. Um, I heard it too. So anyway. Uh, I object, and you know, based on what I've seen, it sounds like it doesn't fit in the neighborhood very well at all. And um, you know, my kids grew up here, and I wouldn't want this. You know, I used to walk up the bashes all the time, so right, wouldn't right. want them walking by that. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Take time to come. Appreciate it. Okay, I've got Frank next, and then after Frank, uh, I think it's Mikkel Keeney. Welcome, Frank. Thanks for coming today. Thank you. My uh, complete name is Frank Campbell, like Campbell said. Thank you, Frank Campbell. And I've lived in Altamira subdivision for 30 plus years. And I can't say any, any more stronger. <clears throat> this is not appropriate for our neighborhood. All I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Okay, Mikkel Keeney, and I apologize for butchering everybody's name today. That's great. It's Mikkel Keeney. I've lived uh, for 27 years in a state La Colina, which is up the kitty corner, the other direction. I'm on the neighborhood board, and I drive by that property every day, going to Summit's Yoga down at Chandler and McClintock. But I did not see the sign because I, I shop at Bashes, but I don't park there. I park by Bashes. So I didn't see the sign until I saw it posted by um, Kevin Sweeney on our board. And then I didn't see the online petition until today. And so I can guarantee you that if I had one more day, I could get three times that number of signatures, not just from the state like Lena, but, you know, the vast majority of our neighbors do not want this. And based on the applicant's response to our, our comments, um, laughing and, you know, very disrespectful of our feelings, I would ask you to deny it just on that. But there are other reasons. We have a character plan for South Tempe, and the city facilitated this, and a lot of us spend a lot of time in these meetings. There's nothing in here about this type of business. We're about bikeability, walkability, environmentally sustainable businesses, such as Goodwill. I would have supported that. But that was denied, even though it could have been approved. This could be approved. I think it should be denied. You know, we're going the wrong direction here. If you can't have a Goodwill, why would you have a smoke shop? And so um, we have Tippy Coalition, which I'm sure you're familiar with. The city um, works with that nonprofit. I used to work at Tippy Community Council and um, was very closely involved with Dara Gibson and other people that, that were at that time running the coalition. Tippy Coalition is about making access less easy to these substances that are harmful to our youth. Even if you're 18 years old, your brain is still not ready for these substances, you know, they're harmful to all of us, children or adults. Doesn't matter that there's already schools right by there. I wish there were. If there were a school there, we, you could deny it like that. You wouldn't even be in the application. Right. So, right. so I would ask that you deny it and look for another place, maybe by the railroad tracks or someplace people don't walk by with their kids. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mikhail. Appreciate your time today being here. I've got Maria Martinez next and then Linda Crook. Good evening. Um, I think what I want to say has been said. I'll just add a little bit more. <clears throat> I moved, my husband and I moved there about 14 years ago, and there's a certain something when you move into 85284 that you feel you come to expect a certain familiarity, a certain um, degree of safety. Um, a certain level, I guess, from the stores that are going to be there at your neighborhood bashes shopping center. And um, it's a very family-oriented community. I have two young children living at home, and not often, but sometimes they bike in the neighborhood. That's disconcerting to me. Um, some people have said they're not against a smoke shop or a vape shop. Um, I do feel that the nature of that business is preying on other people's addictive tendencies. So, um, but I feel strongly to preserve our, our little neighborhood, our community, um, speaking 
as a woman, I know that I would think twice going down to my bashes at 10.30 or 11, I'm not sure what time they close at night, you know, coming out, because my dry cleaners is down on Ray and Rural, and I can tell you from experience that I, I do see the type of clientele that this business draws. So um, I appeal to you as our city people who represent our best interests to please hear the residents of South Tempe as we ask you to look out for our concerns and our best interest. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to be here and thank you for your comments, Ms. Martinez. Next is Linda and then Louis is after Linda. Louis Araneta, I hope. Hi. Welcome, Linda. Linda Crook. I live a couple streets south of where this is proposed. Um, as you know, all the neighborhoods, except for one guy, apparently, um, don't approve of this. I want to bring up there are three smoke shops in the area already. Ray and McClintock has two, and Ray and Rural has another one. Um, children walk, longboard, skateboard ride their bikes up to Dunkin' Donuts, bashes all the time. They pass that all the time. My 15-year-old daughter and her friends go to that nail shop right next door. You have to be 18 to go into the store. However, it doesn't say you have to be 18 to stand outside of the store and get things handed off to you, which has happened to several of my son's friends. He's 16, goes to Corona del Sol, and we've had a lot of issues with vaping. And That's what I did. <laughs> underage. That's pretty common, and you're right. I know you're not going to answer this, but do you want one of those in your neighborhood? Also, Mr. Alatrash is being very disrespectful and laughing at us. He sells drug paraphernalia, period. He's not, sell, just so you know, he's not here to purposely, I hope, act disrespectful, but I'm not concerned about that. I'm very concerned about your comments. So well, that, that you, re reflects on him and affects us. So okay if he's a business owner what are we going to be dealing with okay. if he's disrespectful this is your business? opportunity to affect me though and i suggest you keep it up here focus up here because that's that's really the point that was i can't control him really so i just I'm don't just, let it be a distraction if you can't see him past people speaking i was that was my observation sir hmm. and it's not just me 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 i have several neighbors who couldn't make it tonight who really wanted to be here um, Matt Smith put together a lot of information. Nobody wants it. The nail shop next door doesn't. The beauty supply store or the beauty center next door doesn't want it. Um, it doesn't belong here. I am all for free enterprise, but he needs to go somewhere else because it's not appropriate for that neighborhood. Um, several kids wait for the bus right outside that shop. They celebrate 420 day and all this stuff visibly in their windows. It's just not for that neighborhood. Thank you very Thanks. much. Lewis, and then after Lewis is Matthew Martinez. Thank you for the opportunity to address you and provide input. I'm Louis Araneta, live in Corona del Sol Estates, um, just in the uh, one of the. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being thank, here today. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I won't repeat what other folks have said, but it, it all appear, appears to deal with the criteria for the permit i.e. Con contribution to the deterioration of the neighborhood. In 1994, when my wife and I bought our home, we bought it because it, it was a nicer, higher-priced home to raise our kids in, but we also bought it for the greater feel and ambience of the greater neighborhood. And um, I go to the dry cleaner called Avalon Cleaners down the road at um, Rural and Ray, the northeast corner, I believe, and when I have to wait in line for three to five minutes to drop off my laundry, um, there's a smoke shop a few storefronts down. And while the owner proprietor can can control people when they enter his premises, um, I hear and see young 20 year olds or whatever ages they are pulling up with their vehicles and the radios blaring, blaring, um, yelling and having a good time with their friends. And, and that's all well and good, but it does cause a negative feel for our neighborhood that we uh, moved into 24 years ago and then we now help take care of our grandkids um, even though our kids are grown and gone now. So I ask that you please consider um, my input and the input of uh, my neighbors in uh, reconsidering that this um, should not be granted. It does deteriorate the ambience and the value I consider our neighborhood to be 
it may sound uppity, but one of the crown jewels of Tempe in terms of its residential neighborhoods, and we'd like to keep it that way with all respect to the business owner who wants to establish multiple locations. I hope you could find an, another multiple location somewhere else. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for your comments. Matthew, and then the last speaker is Thomas Collins. Wait, Monica. Monica Martinez. Uh, I live in uh, Altamira, and then the reason we moved. I'm to, sorry, I, yeah, I didn't hear I'm your Monica name. Monica Martinez. I wrote the. I put my husband's name. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's me. Welcome, way. Monica. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I live in Altamira, and the reason why we moved to this neighborhood it was, is because it was a, it's a family neighborhood. We have two little ones, and uh, we walk to the Vashas, we, walk, we go to the Starbucks, and that kind of shop is not something that I want my girls to get familiar with. Sometimes I, I need to go to the Vashas at a, t a night or very early in the morning, and I don't feel now, if that store is there, I won't feel that confident to go there by myself. I'm a realtor too, so um, yeah, it affects the values of the houses. People, they when uh, they're gonna uh, move to a place, they want to feel, they want to know what is around it. They want to know that it's a family neighbor. So it does affect uh, the values of the houses there. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the time, and I will appreciate it really a lot from the bottom of my heart. If you can deny that, and he can find another place where it's not a neighborhood family. Thank you very much for taking your time to be here today, Monica. And Thomas Collins, did Thomas already speak? This is the senior? Awesome. Family affair today. And again, thanks to everybody for sitting through the whole agenda too. Take your time. My name is Thomas Collins, as is my son, you heard, and my wife, you also heard. Welcome. Uh, thank you. We also want to report that there has been a uh, notice of violation for the store in uh, Scottsdale. I um, uh, was notified on October 27, 27, 2016, that they were charged by the FDA of allowing a minor to buy Swisser Sweets cigars. And they're supposed to check anyone under 27. Right. And obviously, a kid under 18 uh, shouldn't have been in there to begin with and shouldn't have been able to buy cigars. I'm not sure if Swiss or Sweet Grapes are, but nonetheless, they're cigars. And so, uh, I mean, I'm just, it's, it's such a temptation for kids to figure out how to get, get around the rules, and, you know, it's a, it's a difficult it's a difficult proposition for convenience stores, never mind a place like this, which is designed to attract people to buy cigarettes and other paraphernalia. So if you, if you think about a life of a convenience store where the clerks are can get fired for selling cigarettes for somebody underage, this store is set up to attract kids and try the kids to try and figure out exactly how they can get around the 27 age. And 27 is... You know, should be able to be discourage people. They didn't talk about keeping people out 27 and, and younger. So my concern is that, well, I live on Levy, and my concern is that it's just not appropriate for our neighborhood, and it's, it's not, what's the right word? It's just not, I don't think it is what it's, what it's being told to the staff. It's way more than just a cigarette Tobacco store. shop means yeah. much more than tobacco. Way more than that. That should be understood yeah. by works. everybody. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You are so most you welcome. you want this for the record, I can give it to you. Absolutely. It's a violation. We welcome it. Uh, again, thank you to many speakers who took their time to be here today. You have definitely made a difference in uh, hearing. I want you to know that. Um, and it's much appreciated by uh, myself and the staff. Um, Mr. Alarash, do you want to make any comments uh, before I go ahead and make a decision on the case? You're welcome to do so. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody, for coming up. Um, I just want to clarify the whole disrespect thing. I'm just laughing because there was a lot of false information, and that was it was towards against nobody. I don't want nobody. People to get are sensitive, though. You'd notice. Yeah. So it was okay. just like a lot of stuff that was said. It was just it wasn't true, and that, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Is everybody? Well, I know that. I that. understand that yeah. what you and do is legal and hopefully operated correctly, but yeah. they don't know that, and they've seen things not go well yeah. in other types of these shops. So. They have valid concerns, and yes. we need to recognize that. And then, the thing, like, there's a smoke shop, like, I think a mile and a half down, too. So, like, it's not me being there. I don't, I feel like, they feel like it's, like, the end of the world. I, I don't know. But uh, this pamphlet, this Instagram page, has a lot of those pieces I was telling you about, those expensive pieces. So, mm -hmm. just, so take a look at that. Thank you guys. Thank you, for yes. okay. Thank you for listening. I You're very welcome, you. and I appreciate your time and wish you luck. Okay, uh, again, thanks to everybody. There's a number of criteria in our code that are required to be met in order to grant a use permit. Uh, based on what I've seen, based on what I observed at the site today, uh, visiting some of your neighborhoods, the adjacent businesses, I don't mean visiting with the people in them, but driving by or walking by, and on the public testimony today, uh, this request for use, I'm not going to continue this because I think that drags it out unnecessarily. I think I have enough information in front of me and heard enough testimony. Uh, this request for use permit is denied. It does not meet the criteria. And thank you very much. Our next, that's the last action item for today's agenda. Uh, the next meeting of the hearing officers of City Tempe is Tuesday, August 1st, 2017. Uh, there is an appeal period, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, if you weren't here. The applicant can appeal this decision. Check with city staff if you want to follow the case. Uh, today's agenda, today's uh, meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>